Hi, Eric Gibo, ericgibo.com, and today, thanks to photostrat.com, I'm going to talk about the Nikon D750. I said talk, I don't say present you, because this camera has been on the market for several years, but I think uh, it's important to, to know if it's still interesting or not in the year 2021. So, let's start. So, many people ask me, uh, could you do a review of the Nikon D750? I always say the same thing. Well, this camera is from the year 2014. There are many, many, many hundreds, thousands uh, of review about this camera. And they always say the same thing. So, yeah, but we want your opinion. And second, we want your opinion in uh, year 2021. Okay, so, well, in 2020, they already asked for this uh, review, okay? So yes, I'm going to review uh, the camera, tell you a bit about it, and also what I think about buying it in 2021. If it, if, is it still worth it, okay? So this is a DSLR camera. Uh, as you can see, there's a mirror here, okay? This is a full-frame camera. Uh, well, 24 by 36, well, full-frame, well, it's a commercial term because uh, there are larger sensors, but doesn't matter. This is not uh, the topic today, okay? So this is a 24.3 megapix sensor. You have sensor cleaning system, which is good because in 2014, not every camera had it. And uh, let's speak about the RAW file. Uh, this is important because you can do a 14-bit RAW file and 12-bit RAW file and JPEG, obviously. Why do I straight the point on the on the 14 bit? Because in 2024, Sony didn't do yet uh, 14 bit. It, I think, it was until 2016 when they started to have 14 bit uh, full frame cameras. Okay, so uh, you have a camera that is that two years earlier than Sony had this uh, possibility. You have a double slot, uh, dual slot uh, memory card. Uh, which is why many professionals uh, like this camera and bought this camera when it came out or still buy it now because you have uh, the tranquility to have a uh, double uh, writing it can be uh, on other, one is one when one is uh, full it starts writing on the second card or you have raw file on one side and jpeg on the other side or you have a backup you have both the same pictures but for uh, social photographers or weddings and uh, Things like this, uh, it's very important for them that as they cannot repeat uh, the pictures uh, to have a copy uh, backup. Okay, so it has it. This is why this camera was really liked. It has uh, the card, card uh, SD card, and it's compatible with uh, UHS 1. The viewfinder is 100%. Uh, you have a diopter correction here. 100% is also what many people uh, search because they want uh, uh, what you see is what you get. They don't want to make a picture and then in post-production they realize that the picture was is actually a bit larger than what they saw because it was like 95% or 98% uh, viewfinder. This one is 100%. This is an FX lens mount, full frame. Okay, so what I really like about Nikon is uh, although this is uh, to, to have it as full frame, you need to have FX lenses you can still mount DX lenses, okay? Uh, DX, is, I thought for APS-C, you can mount them, but you will have a crop in your picture, but you can still use the lens. Uh, when I was using Canon uh, 5D Mark III and 5D Mark II, uh, you have EF lenses that are for any uh, Canon camera uh, reflex, a reflex camera, but you have EFS that are not for just any, that only for APS-C. And if you mount it on your Canon body, it will mount, but you risk to break the mirror. So you cannot just cannot use it. So with Nikon, yes, although you have a DX lens, you can still mount it and use it on your uh, full frame camera. So this is a really good point in favor of, of Nikon. The shutter speed uh, from 30 seconds up to one four thousandth of a second. Uh, plus ball mode, uh, I think one four thousandth of a second is a bit short for a camera that is uh, was thought for professional. I would prefer to have uh, one eight thousandth of a second. This is a bit surprising. Uh, they didn't go that high, but well, uh, that's okay. I think it will be okay for most people. But people want to do portrait with really shallow depth of field, and they want really to have the the, the aperture really wide. Uh, maybe it may be short, okay? But, uh, well, this is what it is. I'll give you the, the data, okay? It has an integrated flash here. Switch on the camera here. Okay, a small flash. 
I would never use that kind of flashes, not on this camera, on any camera. I use it only if my life matters, okay? Or to trigger another flash via uh, see each other and uh, when this one uh, bur uh, flashes, the other one uh, do it too. But I would not use it, okay? It's even strange that this flash is on this camera because normally from a certain range of camera, they don't even bother to put these uh, small flashes. They have just a hot shoe, which is here. So you can put a proper uh, Cobra flash or to, you can pu put a trigger for an external flash. But, okay, the flash synchro is 1 250th of a second, which is what I always like and prefer. Uh, well, I would prefer to have higher, but I mean, for reflex cameras, I think this is fine, okay? And you have many way of shooting, uh, many um, uh, shooting mode. And you can access them very easily. You have a small lock here, and then there's under this main wheel, you have another small wheel. So you have a single shot, continuous, a slow, continuous high, a silent, many options. And what is interesting is the mirror up. You have it directly here. It means if you do long exposure and you want to lift uh, the mirror so you don't have this vibration, well, you have access directly here. So when you press the trigger, it will lift the mirror, wait off a second or a bit so it stop vibrating and then make the picture but you have direct access i really like it uh, burst rate 6.5 pictures per second it sounds slow for many people because you hear this crazy number of electronic shutters but really if you think about it is okay for most of us most people unless you really do high action photography but for many years people were doing action photography with slower speed than this but now with mirrorless many people are rushing to a very high uh, 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 burst rate so it may sound a bit slow but i think for the reflex camera this type what this uh, camera is aimed to i think this is fine Surprisingly, you have the scene mode and FX mode here on the wheel because this camera was really thought uh, for advanced uh, user or professional. So this is strange to have uh, this uh, preset like uh, portrait, uh, um, toy, all this. No? And uh, well, I think if someone buys it uh, and doesn't know already how to configure the camera, it may help to start okay so it, it's there you don't have to use it if you don't want it okay and you also have uh, the FX mode so you can go black and white or color effects or whatever for people who don't want to uh, post process uh, the, the pictures and have it directly from the camera it's something I never use but it's here okay bracketing it does bracketing so you have exposure bracketing white balance bracketing but what i really like about the bracketing is that you can go up to nine pictures so very often bracketing are three or five pictures this one is up to nine so it makes several pictures uh, changing the exposure for example and then you pick the one you want okay so or the, or several or just one the your favorite picture but you have several options so i think this is good in there you have this bracketing okay actually you have a direct button here to go bracketing so uh, this camera we'll speak about it the buttons are really well placed let's speak about the iso high iso especially i was really surprised uh, by the quality and did not expect to have uh, in a camera from 2014 reflex camera to have such clean high iso it goes from, uh, well, I'll pass you some pictures, you can have a look at it anyway. It goes from 100 up to 12,800 ISO, and then you can force it to 50 and to 51,200 ISO. I think at 6,400 ISO, the picture is clean, completely usable, you don't have to do much tuning. On 12,800, I think it's not that usable, maybe you have to do hard work to, to fix it, and... Uh, Unless you really need the picture, I would not bother, okay? But if you think about it, 6400 ISO is plenty. Obviously, some people are dazzled by uh, Sony uh, 100,000 ISO and things like this. But let's come back to normal world, not uh, crazy uh, techno freak, okay? Uh, I think 6400 uh, ISO, this is something... Uh, when I was using my Reflex uh, 5D Mark III uh, Canon uh, in church for uh, weddings, I never needed to go up to 6400 ISO and the few times I went that high it was not as clean as this so I think for most people if you think a bit uh, this is enough okay so the quality is good really acceptable now let's speak about the autofocus you can pick 11 or 51 uh, autofocus point and uh, many people don't understand much that they think oh you you, you have to have all 11 switched on at the same time, or all 51, no, no. This is what you, you pick 
all your camera is going to use your focus point and then you can use one or two or a block or whatever or two i don't know but one or a block or, or, or an area okay so is it enough yes it's enough no problem many people uh think yeah but i saw a camera it has like 100 and uh, almost 200 uh, focusing point uh, is it enough to have 11 or 51 yes for most people it is but the only thing on this camera i think the autofocus point are really too centered many people when they compose they want to have uh, an element that is in focus and it's in it's on the side on your corner and there you don't have a point so i know that reflex cameras the the autofocus point are more centered than mirrorless when most of the time nowadays they cover the full sensor or almost full sensor but still i think this is too centered okay uh is it a problem for me no because anyway i always use one one point and always a uh, reframe so to me it would not be a problem but i know many people don't work this way and they would probably like to have some focusing point more outside of the center a bit further than the center and uh, by the way um many people have contacted me asking oh how do i get just one point activated i don't find it I, I pick 11 or 51 but then i cannot get just one point activated on a nikon camera here you have a button to put a manual focus or uh, autofocus you go on autofocus and then you press a small center button okay and then you go on the wheel here or here i can't remember which one of two okay and then you turn and then on the top screen or in the viewfinder or on the back screen depends uh, on the camera you have uh, you will see that you have the possibility to have just one dot so if you had this problem this is the solution to access just one dot is the way you do it okay if you go in live view you actually have face uh, detection so it will detect your face but, or face or your subject i think uh, it's not that good okay uh, this technology with uh, nikon at that time was not okay it works but uh, it fails many many times and this is when we get to the video okay uh, in video this camera is really not thought for videos it gives you some feature video feature but it's not thought for video because uh, you'll see that the autofocus is a disaster in video i mean if you don't go manual obviously no problem but if you want to do autofocus it doesn't follow properly uh, it was really not thought for video actually uh, you get full hd at 60 50 30 25 and 24p the uh, file format is move and uh, i would say that uh, you'll notice that at that time nikon was really late on video still in some part but now if you see uh, z6 or z6 more 2 z7 uh, video are really a lot better than then okay so i would not buy this camera for video that's for sure okay if we look at the screen the screen you can uh, move it this way and this way okay you can flip it but not vertically just 90 degrees maximum no sideways some people prefer sideways some people don't like that it moves whatever some people like it this way well it swivels uh, so really, it's a matter of taste but this is the way it is i can uh, i must say that the screen is good for that time i think it's 1 million pixel which this sounds little nowadays but at that time it was okay and the quality is okay it's not touchable okay the size is 3.2 inch uh, eight centimeters uh size is good and it's not touchable so if you really like to use touchable screen uh, you will miss it uh, but as this camera is not the kind of camera you you use in live view you would actually need to touch it probably for menus so i think it's not a, of a problem this is not touchable okay i think it was not a when i i use a, a touchable screen with my olympus and i had no problem using this one that is not touchable let's speak about connectivity here you have many uh, small uh, doors plastic okay and you have connectivity as you can see it's all plastic because this uh, camera is weather sealed dust and weather sealed so uh, this is a good point also you have connectors you have usb it's not the standard usb you have a nikon cable here uh, hdmi uh, a jack for microphone a jack for a headphone and wi-fi i think for that time it's okay to me for what i use a camera i think this is fine it also does uh, hdr and time lapse and it weighs 840 grams body only okay uh, i think uh, this is the right weight for the right i mean 
that kind of camera normally is uh, this weight or a bit heavier so i think it's acceptable i think it's a bit lighter than this d610 okay so um, i think that's okay the weight is acceptable for that kind of camera so let's speak about the pro and the cons okay let's start with the cons first i think uh the weight of the we could say the the the, the way the autofocus point I placed is too centered for many people not for me but for many people I think the video is completely lost I think uh, you should not think about this camera for video and the autofocus and video is a disaster okay so uh, disaster if you want to do serious video okay although many people do serious video they do manual focusing but nowadays less and less so for video I would leave this camera completely out if you want if you look for a video camera and you want Nikon then I would go for mirrorless like a Z6 II or uh, if you go Sony uh, Alpha 7 III for example but uh, uh, that's it now let's speak about the good point well the massive enormous ex extraordinary good point is its price nowadays because it still sells you don't have to buy it second hand you can buy it new it's about 1300 euros uh, which is really affordable it's a great price and this is also why I decided to test this camera with uh, Tamron 2470 and not an icon why because many people want a full-frame camera although I did a video saying that you probably don't need a full-frame camera I leave you the link here some people want a full-frame camera it doesn't matter if they need it or not they just want it but they have a limited budget so I think this is a great option for its price but then can you afford the lenses and this is a big problem when you go full frame lenses are expensive and looking at a lens like a Tamron or Sigma very often is a good option not all Sigma are cheaper than Nikon but uh, some are and uh, Tamron is uh, most of the time cheaper 2470 by Nikon is more expensive than this one okay so I think I wanted to try it because many people told me Tamron was not focusing properly with the Nikon I must say it focused perfectly. The video is video problem in autofocus is not due to the lens, but due to the camera. Okay, and I think uh, this auto th this lens is a great combo with this body because you have an affordable lens, still money, but affordable lens and an affordable full frame camera. So I think this is a really great point. Second, it works really nice in low light. I think really usable and uh, you don't have to go to this uh, latest uh, camera bodies very expensive to get really low light i think it's acceptable you th see that it is really thought for professional uh, the uh, uh, shutter actuation uh, actually thought for 150,000 uh, pictures uh, although it can last longer okay but i think this is really okay 150,000 many people think that when you get 250,000 uh, the camera is dead you can throw it in the bin that's not this way first it, you know, the shutter may last a lot longer than this second uh, if it breaks you can always change it and keep the camera you have uh, the shutter replaced and that's it and the camera goes on for several years if you want so this is not a problem the autofocus is very fast in, uh, in video no but in uh, in photo is very fast really good i really liked it the battery battery is impressive uh, you get about uh, 1230 pictures on a single charge so uh, i wish that was the same way in mirrorless so this is really impressive you have all night with the, with your battery all day that, that's really okay the way uh, its buttons are placed and everything this is really a nice camera in your hand uh, my hand is not very big so i think this is nice uh, obviously it's a lot larger than my olympus but i think it's really nice the buttons are really well placed when you think about it when you're doing social photography like a wedding you don't want to think where the buttons are and uh, they're really at hand it's really well placed you don't have to think it's really good i, I really like uh the, the, the this camera the way everything is placed this is really nice the fact that it has double slot it's really a plus uh the fact that it's, it is weather sealed is really a plus the weight is good and also one thing that is really good is the amount of lenses you can get for your nikon reflex um many people uh, they don't realize that uh, um, when they go uh, mirrorless 
they can actually use a reflex lens with an adapter but people don't realize that most of these people end up selling this uh, reflex lens and buy um, an original uh, mirrorless lens so there are many many secondhand lenses available for this camera but also there are many new lenses with a bargain price because uh, the makers are trying to sell mirrorless so they try to sell their uh, reflex stock so it gives you access to many many lenses and uh, many options for really good price so this is something you should take into account so who is this camera for uh, portrait people probably uh, social reportage like a wedding or uh, new newspaper or whatever then uh, landscape probably I don't think fast action photography uh, is for this because it's up to one uh, four thousandths of a second uh, 6.5 frame per second so maybe action photographer would not use this camera okay but still i think it's usable but i think they probably would not use it but i think for portrait social uh, photography uh, landscape this is a great camera so would i buy it well surely i would buy this camera for many reasons first because if you think about it this camera is a bargain um, a d850 costs twice the price of this uh, Canon uh, 5D Mark IV costs about 1,000 euros more than this. I don't say that they're better or less, but if you look at the price difference, it's massive. And this camera offers you a lot, a lot for what it costs. And I would surely prefer this camera to a 610, uh, Nikon D610 or a Canon uh, 6D Mark II. I would prefer it because it's better built. Uh, it's uh, weather sealed it's it's a lot better camera and the price is really accessible right now so I think if tomorrow I want to buy a full frame reflex camera no doubt I would buy this one I would not buy uh, again a 5d mark 4 uh, well I never had the mark 4 I had the mark 3 I would not buy many other options but in reflex are not that many options anyway but within Nikon this is the full frame to have in reflex and uh, on the market i would probably buy this one no doubt yes it is a uh, seven year old technology but the situation around uh, the us about photography has not changed that much uh, uh, doesn't change at all so i think if this camera was okay in 2014 it's still perfect in 2021 so no doubt i recommend this camera in 2021 and probably 2022 also <laughs> we'll see okay so thank you very much photoswap for lending me the camera thank you very much to you for watching the video if you feel it may interest other people please share it on social networks if you have not done yet please subscribe to my youtube channel the small button down here and so small bell if you click on the bell get notified when i upload a new video my website ericgibo.com if you have any question can leave a comment below I also leave you uh, links of my uh, gear on amazon also links to other part of my youtube channel also link leave you a link of my paypal account in case you want to make a donation thank you very much Take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.